Hello, I'm John David Ebert, and welcome to the uh, the next class in our series on understanding contemporary art. Uh, we're looking at the works of Joseph Beuys, and last time we saw how in Cosmology A, uh, the first epoch of Beuys's career, the human body became the primary surface of inscription for his signifiers, uh, but that it very quickly began to dissolve. And uh, going right to the art then, um, this is an image, this is untitled 1959, in which Boyce now begins experimenting a bit with some abstract expressionism. The Germans were keeping a careful eye on what was going on in New York. And here Boyce sort of uh, re-territorializes um, abstract expressionism at precisely the point where his work reaches a juncture and the first cosmology begins to dissolve. And here you can still see the human form, but it's also dissolving. It's coming, it's coming to pieces and it's being liquefied. Uh, this is Battery from 1959. Uh, it, it does have a reference to the batteries that he will later will become a symbol for spiritual uh, conducting spiritual potential uh, in social situations in his later work. But it is still a, a work that looks back at abstract expressionism and he's experimenting with it. Um, just as Gerhard Richter also in his early work was keeping a careful eye on New York pop art and began to incorporate some of the elements of pop art in his art. Uh, so Boyce was keeping an eye on abstract expressionism, and we see him here in these early works. This one is Felt Action, 1963, beginning to uh, sort of play around with it. But it is uh, the work here known as Bathtub 1960 that is really the key transitional point, the gateway, as it were, whereby uh, Cosmology B, the art of his mature period, of his Dusseldorf period, now begins to come into being. What we have here is... Um, a signifier that has been deworlded from a previously functioning world horizon, and now it's a trace. So the art of the mature period of Boyce's work is composed of traces. The human being is conspicuous by his absence. Um, this was the bathtub that Boyce was born in, but now note that the viewer has to supply the missing world horizon that this bathtub was once a part of and has now been scrapped from since this is a post-catastrophic art and now he's reading the midden heap that has been left over from the great world catastrophe and re-territorializing all of these various signifiers as he's fished them out of the, the rubble, the wreckage, and they are left to stand for worlds that once were but are no longer. This is Horns from the same period. This is 1960. And here, too, now uh, what we have are uh, horns that stand in for the animal. The animal is missing. And so the viewer has to supply, it's a syncopated image, so the viewer has to supply the missing animal form, just as the great animals that had been one of the major signifiers of his first period, uh, the various cows and sheep and bees and swans and so forth. Those are all gone now, just as the human form is gone. And so now the viewer has to supply the missing figure that these are meant to be, uh, according to Joseph Boyce and Carolyn Tisdall's catalog, which by the way, Carolyn Tisdall's catalog Horizon A is the best book for understanding Joseph Boyce since it's full of uh, quotations from him in there commenting on his own works of art. And in there, he comments that this work was an, meant to be an illustration of the processes of the cycling of the blood through the animal that produced the horns on an annual basis. Uh, but it's also a syncopated image in which now we're dealing with a cosmology of traces. This is the famous fat chair from 1964 that also is now a deworlded signifier that's functioning now as a trace. It's no longer an object for people to sit on, though it's been re-territorialized. It does refer back to Van Gogh's uh, painting, the chair here from uh, 1888. But whereas with Van Gogh, the chair there functioned in a world horizon that was part of a metaphysical age in which it functioned for people to sit on, and it was part of a functioning world in the Heideggerian sense, a world that was opening up in opposition to the dark abyssal tendencies of Earth to pull it down. We have that tension of world versus Earth in the classical metaphysical age. Um, but the chair no longer functions that way in the post-catastrophic world horizon that Boyce is operating on. The chair now is meant to illustrate a cosmological principle. The fat that is put on the chair, fat for Boyce, is one of the main materials that he uses for the second period, the mature period of his work. And fat represents for him the principle of the indeterminate, the principle of pure receptivity to f of form to imprint uh, its form upon it, and for it to take the shape of whatever form is imprinted on it. And here it illustrates the right angularity of the chair, almost in a geometrical fashion. Uh, and so it simply represents the, the potential of the fat to receive whatever form is imposed upon it. It no longer has the function uh, of an object for sitting since it's been ripped free of the world horizon of an age that went down the drain during a cosmic catastrophe. Um, here we have another one of his famous works. This is the pack from 1969. Um, it reminds one of, at first glance of uh, 
uh, of a sled being pulled by Eskimo dogs or, or, or being pulled by a, a bunch of dogs, but the dogs here are missing. They're gone, just as the humans are gone now. Human beings and the human body have been deleted from this secondary cosmology, uh, which is a cosmology of vast, impersonal cosmic forces. And here, too, what we see is that in each of these various sleds, um, the ontologically homeless human being now is given a sort of uh, ontological survival kit. Each one has a roll of felt on it, and felt signifies for Boyce the warming principle of isolation. It isolates and it warms the individual, and there's a flashlight and there's a hunk of fat on each one of these sleds. So in Heidegger's age of the ontologically homeless human being, the human being who's been estranged from being as the result of the enframing processes of the scientific industrial world order that have uh, ruptured his uh, relationship to being, now for this world of the ontologically homeless human being, Boyce provides an emergency survival kit for each individual. Now, uh, this is um, a drawing for a sculpture. This is Virgin, 1958. The actual sculpture was produced in 1961. And it represents the fact that um, this is Virgin, and it's a Virgin who has been represented as a series of teakwood logs. The, ac the actual sculpture will be a series of teakwood logs that shows that the individual has now been absorbed into the cosmic forces and the cosmic forces that have absorbed the human being are the protagonists of this art now, no longer the human being himself. This is a sort of counterpart to another work that he did called Mountain King, uh, which was an allusion to James Joyce's uh, Finnegan's Wake in which HCE, the, the protagonist of that work, uh, is represented as being dissolved into the landscape. That mountain over there represents his toes. Uh, the spinal column is represented by the, the chasm of the canyon that runs through the rock. Uh, and the head is represented by another rock and so forth. But what this illustrates for Boyce in the middle period is that the human being has been absorbed into these Steinerian cosmic processes and is no longer the protagonist of this art. Now there's an opposed cosmological tendency uh, that is represented by a series of silent gramophones that he does during this period, 1962-63. This one is untitled, but it's one of the first of the silent gramophones which, whereby he has simply taken an LP record and covered it in red paint so that it cannot communicate. Um, there's, we'll do a series of these. One of them might have a, an animal bone instead of a needle. But the point of them is that he has ruptured the ability of the gramophone to communicate. It can no longer emit sound, so it can no longer communicate. And there's an opposed entropic tendency during this middle period of Boyce's art that is opposed to the evolutionary tendency of the cosmic forces, which we've just seen illustrated for us by the Mountain King and, some, and the other works. This illustrates Boyce's awareness that the universe is now composed of objects whose function in a normal functioning valid world horizon has been ruptured and they are retreating and withdrawing from each other into isolation. And so uh, Boyce's various famous actions uh, was meant to redress this issue, to open up new portals of communication between entities, which is what he did in the series of actions that he was part of the Fluxus group briefly from about 1963-64 down to about 1974. He did this series of famous performances in which he did various things. In this one, this is a photograph from uh, How to Explain Pictures to a Dead Hair, in which Boyce sat in a chair uh, for several hours with his face painted with gold paint and honey on his head. One shoe was isolated with felt and the other with an iron sole. There was a primitive uh, sort of animal bone, uh, an animal telephone, which was simply an animal bone wrapped with electrical electrical wire that was underneath his chair, and he sat with this dead rabbit in his hand, in his arms, cradled it, and communicated with it by whispering interpretations of his works of art to it, which was meant to illustrate the communication breakdown between species and also between the rational mind, which Boyce felt that the industrial landscape of the scientific world had divorced us from the earlier pre-rational instinctual archaic forces within us. Um, and he was trying to open up portals of communication between these non-rational forces and instincts within us and the rational mind, as well as opening up portals between species, animals, and humans in a very shamanic manner. Uh, this later, this is one of the last actions that he did where um, this is the coyote action of 1974, where he went into a New York room and isolated himself for several days in a room with a coyote and did various kinds of shamanistic attempts to communicate with the coyote. Once again, addressing the communication breakdown of a contemporary man and trying to repair that communication breakdown by opening up new portals of communication between species and between various modes of thought. Um, this is the uh, uh, felt piano, the famous felt piano that is a leftover from one of the famous actions of 1966. 
And a piano that is wrapped in felt is just like the record that has been painted over. It can no longer communicate. And so it's part of the entropic tendency of objects to break down and withdraw and isolate away from each other. Uh, that represents a, an opposed counter tendency to the evolutionary tendency of his cosmic forces during this mature period of Boyce's art. And the red cross on the piano indicates that the situation is an emergency now. This breakdown of things, this breakdown of objects that no longer function in a validly functioning world horizon, since that horizon went down the drain in the apocalypse of World War II, is now a dire emergency situation. And so we're left with a post-catastrophic art and a damaged cosmology uh, in which forms can no longer function the way that they used to. Uh, chairs and pianos and records no longer work. Uh, they have to be re-territorialized. They have to be re-inscribed now by the artist. Like the felt suit here, which is one of the last ones. This is the last image we'll show uh, from Boyce's middle period. This is felt suit from 1970, in which the suit has no buttons and no zippers, and therefore it cannot function. So once again, this is yet another of this series of objects that are associated with felt, whose functionality has broken down and been ruptured and they can no longer communicate or work like they're supposed to. Um, so felt becomes for Boyce the material that is associated with isolation and communication breakdown, whereas fat is associated with the principle of indeterminacy to receive form. And electricity, he will work with copper as one of his other substances. Copper conducts electricity. It's associated with the cold mineralogical principle of conducting electricity, just as felt is, is associated with warmth and isolation. And fat is associated with warmth and the principle for the receptivity of form. And both fat and the copper substances are associated with the evolutionary aspect of his cosmology, whereas felt is associated with the entropic aspect of this cosmology, the rupturing of objects and their inability to speak and communicate with each other that he as an artist, through his various actions of this famous period, was, was trying to redress by opening up new lines and portals of communication between them.